I had a lot of role models as I grew. I think I expanded. Um, I think the obvious ones would be my parents and my grandparents. My mom is an educator and she was the first black female principal um, in Menominee Falls. My father was the first black gay warden in the history of Wisconsin. Um, my grandmother grew up on a farm with 16 children in Kosciuszko, Mississippi, and she has two master's degrees. Um, so I was just surrounded by people who um, anticipated more for themselves despite the options that were given to them. Faith and hope, I think, matter more than anything. And I would even say, well, I decided this a long time ago in my life that the only thing worse than hope and faith was death. So if you couldn't exist with it, then you were probably better off not being alive, which is unfortunate but true in some cases. And so I think that we are all connected so intimately and music and art and dance is really the great way to bridge the connections. So I hope that my music expresses that and a lot of times when I'm stressed or overwhelmed or need to put things in perspective, I think about my ancestors and I'm directly related to two people who were enslaved named Horace and Fanny. And I think about, when I think about hopelessness, I really think about slavery and specifically the transatlantic slave system because I'm a product of that. And so I really try to exist out of faith and honor of the people who had to endure who knows what in order for me to be alive right now. I do know that on my, mom, my mother's side, no one ever had to share a crop, which is huge. And I don't know how the emancipation worked where they ended up having their own land. I wasn't able to find that out, but there are, so, there are like hundreds, I wanna say, I hope I'm not incorrect, acres of land in Mississippi still today that are owned by my family. My grandmother found out about Horace and Fanny because she had to do a lineage exercise when she was getting her master's in theology. And so that's where I got the information from originally. They were in Mississippi. I was um, curious after watching the movie Django and being angry. I really try not to be cynical, so I hoped that when I was watching it, I wasn't being cynical and was trying to appreciate Django as a piece of art. But I just feel like the way that slavery is treated in this country, as how brushed past it is. Well, for example, I sub right now on NPS um, to make money. And I read the history books just to see how the students in 2016 are learning about slavery. And it's still like, this happened. It was kind of bad, but it wasn't terrible. But it was terrible. And it's frustrating to me that especially the students who are direct products of this system aren't um, being told the truth of how terrible it was. And so since we don't know the truth, I don't think that we have a right to romanticize it, which is what Django did. They made a love story that was placed in the backdrop of the antebellum South, which no one really has accurate information on unless you go actively seek it out, which I'm sure most of the black children in NPS do not do. So then they see movies like that and it further confirms that slavery wasn't that bad, which it was.